Hello, this is Ray Motor from ACG, and welcome to this edition of the Hot Seat. Joining me today is Sanjay Munchi from Brocade. Sanjay, thanks again. Thanks, sir. And I think this is your second or third? This is the second one. Well, good. You must like the Hot Seat then. I do. Now, Brocade had a, an announcement related to Next Generation Packer Broker for mobile operators, correct? That's right. Now, what's different, what's new, and what challenges does that solve? Thanks, Ray. Today, it has been clearly established now that visibility is imperative for mobile operators, mm -hmm. regardless of their motivation, whether it is increasing revenue mm -hmm. or reducing OPEX, they need to have visibility into their mobile infrastructure in terms of subscribers, applications, networks, and devices. Right. The way visibility infrastructure is deployed in today's networks is by tapping into the packet core, mm -hmm. bringing the data up to the layer of the network that's called the packet broker layer, where we perform aggregation, replication, and filtering functions. Mm -hmm. And then sending a subset of the data to the layer of the network that's called analytics tools layer, right. where we perform network performance manage management, application management functions, right. Right. and PM, APM right. functions. Right. So Brocade has had three generations of packet brokers over the last few years that are roughly aligned to the current mobile technologies. Right. Okay. As you know, 2G was predominantly voice dominated. Yeah. And mobile operators used to tap directly into the mobile switching center elements. Mm -hmm. And analytics tools were used to analyze quality of experience predominantly for voice. Right. Okay. Then came 3G. And data started to become a key component of mobile networks. Mm -hmm. New tools for congestion management, for capacity planning, right. for security came into existence. Right. Adding these new tools quickly and cost effectively became a major challenge for mobile operators. Yeah, very true. And at that point, packet brokers were used to improve the deployment flexibility yeah. of tool forms. Right. These packet brokers performed the key functions of aggregation and replication. Mm -hmm. We called it Visibility 1.0, or the first generation of packet brokers. Right. And Brocade's first generation packet brokers were deployed by a top tier one mobile operator here in the United yes. States. So we got a real customer. Out there. We did. Yes. So that's a good point, you know, but most of that was about 3G, right? I mean, what about 4G and this whole smartphone revolution? How does that change the visibility for the packet broker? That brings me to the second generation of our packet broker technology. As 4G came, that ushered in a new era migration from voice-centric to a data-led architecture. There were three specific challenges mobile operators faced when 4G came into existence in terms of visibility into 4G LTE networks. One was the bandwidth challenge, pretty clear there. Second is the architectural challenge with 4G. And third one is the application dynamism challenge. Let's talk about each of those and also explain how our second generation packet brokers solved all of those three challenges. First is the bandwidth challenge. As the bandwidth from smartphones and smart devices exploded, the tool costs followed the same trajectory. In order to curb the escalating tool costs, packet brokers started to play another key role beyond simple aggregation and replication. This was the role of deep packet filtering. As you know, the packets inside the mobile core are tunneled or encapsulated. So packet brokers started to look deeper inside the tunnel traffic and classify FaceTime, Netflix, voice or LTE traffic and apply rules based on application and user identity. Application based whitelisting and IMSI or IMSI based filtering became key aspects of this architecture and that's how we help mobile operators resolve the bandwidth challenge with 4G. The second challenge with 4G LTE is the architectural challenge, the roaming between 3G and 4G, MME and SGW split. These caused user sessions to migrate at layer 3 in runtime. What that means is as you are driving up and down the highway and you are on your Viber session or your WhatsApp session, your layer 3 tunnel addresses are going to change continuously. And to compensate for that, the tools at the back end are going to play a role that's called GTP correlation, essentially maintain user to tool persistence. With 4G, mobile operators realize that these tools are spending significant amount of cycles in doing this GTP correlation. The only option mobile operators had 
to cost effectively scale their infrastructure was to offload the G2P correlation to the packet broker layer. At that point, many vendors in the industry created monolithic solutions by embedding this GTP correlation function within their hardware style packet brokers, which resulted in scale constrained product architecture. Brocade, on the other hand, abstracted and extracted the control plane from the network packet broker hardware and created scale out session director software, which essentially scaled out and controlled the packet broker in an SDM style architecture. With that architecture, we now have visibility into applications, into users, and we can scale this architecture to tens of millions of subscribers in a single EPC environment. That was the second challenge of GTP correlation. The third challenge was the application dynamism challenge with 4G. The fact is that as soon as you download a new app from Google Play or Apple iTunes, your behavior towards the network changes significantly. So users are dynamic, applications are dynamic. To enable the tools to dynamically respond to applications in real time, we further developed an open API from our session director towards the tools. This open API enables the tools to dynamically filter out irrelevant traffic in the network packet broker layer and filter in relevant traffic in real time. Let me give you an example of that one. Let us say a tool is analyzing quality of experience for your video or LTE or voice over LTE. The moment you start a Netflix session or a FaceTime session from your mobile device, all of that video traffic is also going to end up hitting the tool unnecessarily. So leveraging our tool API, the tool can now send an instruction to the packet broker and squelch all of that irrelevant traffic in real time. And we can do it with our packet brokers in under one millisecond latency, which is a key requirement for mobile networks. So that's how we solve the application dynamism challenge. So in short, with 4G LTE, the three challenges of bandwidth, architecture, and application dynamism, all of those challenges were solved with our second generation packet broker technology. And this is in deployment with another tier one mobile operator in North America. So it's interesting. I mean, you talked about the next generation, but how does the equation change, right? I mean, when we look at things like virtual EPC and 5G, there's a lot of things going on. I mean, what, what, do, you, what do you see the equation changing? For the packet brokers yeah. in particular. So Ray, the key driver for virtual EPC in general mm -hmm. and 5G in particular mm -hmm. is machine to machine communication okay. and Internet of Things. Right. Okay. As impressive as 4G is, mm -hmm. today's networks can support connections in the range of 10 billion, okay. resuming 2 to 2.5 SIMs per human being on the planet. Right. Okay. In the era of IoT and machine to machine, the number of connections worldwide is going to cross 100 billion. And in a single APC, it can easily cross 100 million. Mm -hmm. The matter of fact is that none of today's hardware style packet broker architectures mm -hmm. will scale to support that number. Mm -hmm. As is very evident from any packet broker data sheet you pick up in the industry, just look at the number of GTP correlated sessions it supports. Okay. Anything below 100 million mm -hmm. is a non stop. Mm -hmm. okay. So, what we have done is leveraging from Big data scale out technologies mm -hmm. like Kafka brokers yeah. and storm clusters, yeah. learning from deployments of those technologies in LinkedIn and Twitter, right. we have been able to completely disaggregate the hardware packet broker okay. and create an end to end software based solution that we call virtual network packet broker. This solution scales to billions of end. We also have developed a virtual DAP solution mm -hmm. that sits in the virtual EPC and works in conjunction with our virtual network yes. packet broker solution. So together, the virtual tab and the virtual network packet broker is what we refer to as the third generation of visibility framework or third generation architecture. And we are awaiting active trials with this architecture with another uh, tier one mobile Excellent. Right. Yeah, making progress for all these real customers then. That's great. Now, Sanjay, there's some companies already in this space, right? I mean, and you touched on a little bit earlier, but could you elaborate on some of the differentiation? Okay, Ray. The first and the foremost would be virtual solution end-to-end. -end. Mm -hmm. Packet brokers have been traditionally hardware appliances mm -hmm. that cannot be run on x86-style architecture with scale-out software. Right. Okay. 
with our first generation and then second generation packet brokers, we disaggregated the control plane software from data plane hardware with our session directory. In our third generation, we have disaggregated the hardware data plane itself mm -hmm. and provide an end-to-end software-based solution. So regardless of the hosting mechanisms, whether mm -hmm. it is hypervisor-based VMs or container-based applications, mm -hmm. This virtualization process externalizes the management of the virtual packet broker and makes it possible to program its utilization. This enables fast and efficient rollout of new services with minimal disruption and maximal scalability. Today, we are proud to have industry's first software-based virtual packet broker and a solution that enables our customers to migrate from today's hardware-oriented to tomorrow's software-centric architecture. Seamless. Right. So it's in line with what the other industries come on. That's the software. Right? That's our first differentiator. Yeah, right. The second one would be scale and performance for real-time interface. Okay. If you look at mobile networks, they're moving from human to human to machine to machine communications. Mm -hmm. And that's a hundredfold increase in number of subscribers. Leveraging from big data scale out technologies like Kafka and Star. Mm -hmm. We provide a visibility framework that scales to 100 million subscribers in a single Evolve Packet Core data center. And at the same time, provides the latency and performance needed to meet the requirements for machine to machine communication. So, I'll give you an example of that. Today, a 50 millisecond latency for rule programming might be good enough, mm -hmm. but with machine to machine, 50 millisecond latency is too much. Because at 50 millisecond latency, a self-driving car, a driverless car that is moving at 100 kilometers per hour will continue to move 1.8 meters from detecting a failure to application of brakes. With our ultra low latency of 1 millisecond for rule programming, the same car moving at the same speed will come to a halt in 2.4 centimeters. So from 1.8 meters to 2.4 centimeters, that's the difference between life and death. Yes. So scale, 100 million subscribers in single Evolve Packet Core data center. And performance, one millisecond rule programming latency is our second key differentiator for real-time intelligence. The third and the final, I would say, is an end-to-end -end architecture, but open. Mm -hmm. We have an end-to-end -end architecture for visibility with our packet broker, packet probes, mm -hmm. but we have disaggregated these interfaces right. completely and open up the interfaces. Yeah. We have tested the interoperability between our packet broker and industry-leading probes and big data platforms right. so that customers have a choice between end-to-end, one-throat-to-choke mm -hmm. or a best-of-breed model. Right. Right. This eliminates vendor locks yeah. and enables customers to incrementally upgrade their visibility framework. Right. So in short, Ray, three key differentiators that we have, number one, Virtualization, software-based packet broker solution end-to-end -end right. for pervasive visibility. Second, real-time intelligence, scale and performance. Right. I gave you some of those numbers. Right. And Save, finally, saves lives, right? And finally, <laughs> last but not the least, right. is end-to-end -end solution, but an open app. Right. Yeah. Now those those are good examples, and I think breaking it up that way is important going forward. Now, Sanjay, why now? I mean, Rokay's been in this space for some time now, That's right? right? I mean, I don't understand why the outbound approach now is being so aggressive with that. That's right, Ray. So we have had three generations of packet brokers that we have been deploying with mobile operators over the last five right. years. The reason why we are coming out more strongly with our message this time around is because we see significant disinformation and inaccuracies in the marketplace when it comes to how visibility architecture and framework should be deployed in a way that is beneficial for the mobile operator and protects their investments. Mm -hmm. Today, vendors are trying to force fit packet brokers that were designed for enterprise grade, low scale applications mm -hmm. into a mobile operator's environment. Let me give you a couple of examples of that. For example, GTP correlation. Mm -hmm. Vendors claim to have support for GTP correlation, but mm -hmm. the scaling numbers are dismal. Okay. Anything below 100 million GTP correlated session is a non-starter. Non okay. Virtualization is another example. Right. Vendors claim to have virtualization support, mm -hmm. even though all they are doing is bringing the virtualized traffic from the EPC to their hardware packet broker. Mm -hmm. That's not a virtual solution. Right. A true virtual solution has no custom or proprietary hardware anywhere right. between the EPC and the tools. Right. 
a detail that's being swept under the rug. So we believe it's our obligation to make sure that customers are well informed mm -hmm. and make the best decision for themselves. Right. So our goal is education, education, education. Right. And that's why we're coming up with this message this time around. Right. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. Well, we're officially off the hot seat, Sanjay. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Ray. And hopefully we'll do one soon again. See you soon. With Sanjay, this is Ray Moda. Thanks for joining this edition of the hot seat.